Hello everybody, it's Shaf Rasool here and welcome to the first episode of Ask Shaf Live. Now, before we even start, I want to apologise for the quality of this video. I'm shooting it on my iPhone, I don't have anybody here to give me a hand, so please don't leave any comment that's saying that the quality's b Okay, because I'll just ignore them. If you don't know who I am, I'm a serial entrepreneur, I'm a columnist for a national newspaper, and I'm a former dragon on BBC Dragon's Den Online. Now, I've got my iPad here, and I'm going to go through some of the questions that you asked me last week. Now, if you've got questions you'd like me to basically feature in next week's episode, please stick them in the comments below, and do remember to subscribe to my channel. Please leave me a comment. Thank you very much. Now, here's the first question. I manifest money in abundance. I think Shaf should start his own training academy and teach real education about property and business. With Shaf's track record and honest approach, I'd sign up in a second. Shaf, is this something that would be possible in the near future? To be honest with you, I'm an entrepreneur, so most of my time is spent basically running my businesses. So the problem I would have is my business, my real business would suffer, so I don't intend to do that ever. But what I will do is I will put content up on YouTube. At the moment, Basically, we've got a pandemic, we're in lockdown, and I have a bit of spare time so I can produce a lot more content than usual. So please do take advantage of that. Leave any comments below and I will try and answer them. Adam L, what is your real intention making so many videos on YouTube? That's what I want to know. I'm just trying to give something back. I've been doing something similar for the Scottish Sun newspaper for the last 10 years. My readers write to me with business problems and I try and deal with them. They ask me for advice and I try and give them advice. Here's a few questions I've answered over the years in my column. Thank you. Luke Carr, please collaborate with Mike Winnett on YouTube. He has emailed Samuel Leeds. He knows and he has some good research in him. Luke, I actually sponsor Mike Winnett's channel. If you look at some of Mike's recent videos, you'll see that it says sponsored by me. Notwithstanding this, I am doing an interview with Mike Winnett. I'll post or I'll do a video as soon as it goes live. Thank you for the suggestion. Mustafa Dar, this is just massive. I don't even know where to start, but that's it coming up on your screen now. So I would to go to a bank and ask for 22 million. I know a commercial plot for sale. Wow, Mustafa, I don't even know what to say to this. Mate, just calm down a little bit, okay? Watch my YouTube channel, and if you have some specific questions, please stick them up, and I'll try and deal with them. I can't promise that I'll deal with every single question, because literally, I get hundreds of questions every week. I get questions from my readers in the Sun newspaper. I get questions on LinkedIn, and now I'm getting loads of questions on YouTube, so please accept my apologies. If I don't answer your question, I will deal with it at some point, or... I will answer a very, very similar question. Random viewer, just some constructive criticism. Shaf, I feel as if the editing is a bit too overwhelming for the video and a lot of it is unnecessary. You're recording alone on the screen and maybe some figures and small animations on the screen. Random viewer, I tend to agree with you. To be honest with you, I've been editing these videos myself and I've been practicing. So literally, yeah, I understand where you're coming from and I'll try and keep the editing down to a minimum. Thank you. Hi Shaf, can you do a video on how you would invest in property if you had to start again today and what do you think the best current property investment strategy is? That's from EJ143478. EJ, I don't subscribe to most of the, the property strategies that are put forward by the property gurus. If I basically was investing in property today, which I do every single day, I would do it totally differently. Now, I'm do, currently working on a project. Um, I'll stick some links in the comments below and it's called crowd kitchens okay you need to watch these videos because out of this opportunity i'm going to get two streams of income i'm going to have a property company which owns the underlying asset which is the buildings okay that's called a prop co then my prop co will rent this to another company which i will own which is called an op co so for the sake of argument Basically, the Crowd Kitchens building, my prop co will rent it to my opco for £60,000 a year. Okay, my operating company, opco, will then run that business and it will then sublet it again and it will generate basically another income, a bit like 
a bit like the WeWork model. So that is the strategy I would adopt because I get two sets of income from it the, and the opco builds a value. If you want to see what I'm talking about, Travis Kalnick is doing something very, very similar. Travis Kalnick was the guy who set up Uber, is doing something very, very similar, and his business is called Cloud Kitchens. So please do check out some of my Crowd Kitchens videos below. W Jazz, can you please be more specific about your IT business? What did the business deal in? Do you have an IT background or did you find those who did it? How did you get your funding for your first IT business? Okay, in my last video, I talked about how I went for a job or I was working as a at a legal firm for a couple of hours and I absolutely hated it. It was probably an hour and a half. So I left and I was going home and I'm on the train and I'm thinking, how on earth am I going to explain to my parents that I've just left a job after an hour and a half? So I'm sitting on the train and further down in the carriage, there's a guy with a huge pile of magazines. And I was like, why has that guy got so many magazines? I mean, this pile must have been like that thick. So I thought, Do you know what? I'm just going to go and speak to him. So I'm a really nosy person. I walked up, I sat next to him and I was like, hello. And he's like, oh, hi. And I said, mate, why have you got so many magazines? And he goes, it's my job. And do you know what's going through my head? I thought, what a great job. This guy reads magazines for a living. And I says, what do you do? And he says, I'm a purchaser for local government and I purchase IT equipment. And I was like, really? And he's like, yeah. So I was, do you know what's going through my head? My, what's going through my head is, do you know what? I should maybe do, just do this job. I should become a purchaser. You know, that's an easy job. So I started picking his brains and I was going, mate, surely that's an easy job, okay? So if two people are offering you IT equipment and company A or person A is a thousand pounds, okay, for the same piece of equipment and person B is 2,000 pounds, surely you buy person A's product. And he said to me, no, it's not about that. It's about the service, it's about the support. It's about the backup that you get. And I was like, really? And he goes, yeah. So I says, you would spend more money if you got better service. And he's like, yeah. So I picked his brains and I distilled everything he told me. I got off the train and I went home and I spoke to my parents. And I was like, dad, I'm going to go back to uni. I'm going to basically do a postgraduate. And he goes, what does that mean? What can you become? And I says, well, I could probably become a lecturer. And my dad really liked that. So he says, what are you going to do for a year? And I said, look, I'm going to try and do some charity work. I'm going to basically improve my education and I'm going to get a job. So my dad was quite chuffed for that. So what I actually did was I thought about everything I'd spoken about on the train and I thought, I'm going to set up an IT company. So everything this chap told me, I distilled into a brochure. Okay, I distilled into a brochure and I started sending it out and I wanted to be a business to business supplier. Now, at that time, I had no money. However, I had £6,000 on my credit cards, so I had absolutely no money and I got a couple of small orders and then one day I got a call. Okay, and it was from basically a huge government department and they wanted to ask me some questions about what my delivery date was, etc. before they sent me a tender document. So I answered the questions, they sent me a tender document. I basically filled in the tender document, I phoned up one of my potential competitors, asked what they would charge, and I charged more. It's as simple as that, I charged more, and I offered a much better service. Lo and behold, a few weeks later, a purchase order popped through my door for £500,000. Okay, so somebody ordered £500,000 worth of equipment from my fledgling IT business. Now, I had no way of fulfilling this, none whatsoever, because my cash flow is circa a few thousand pounds. So the first thing I did was I went to the bank and they explained to me that really I couldn't borrow money until I'd been in business for a couple of years. So I had to be in business for a couple of years. I had to have audited accounts and that was that. So in those days, financially, I was very, very naive. OK, so I thought, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to borrow the money off my parents. So one night we're sitting there, we're having dinner and basically my dad's at the table and he's reading, he's reading a newspaper. And remember, my parents run a news agent shop, so he's reading a newspaper. I was like, Dad, and he's just ignoring me. I was like, Dad, he's just ignoring me. And I was like, literally, Dad, and he's still ignoring me. And he eventually said, what is it? And I said, Dad, I need to borrow some money. And he goes, speak to your mum. And I'm like this, Dad, you don't, you don't understand. I need to borrow a few hundred thousand pounds. And I explained this story to him and he went absolutely ballistic. He just went nuts. He goes, you don't, you don't even have an IT company. We never brought you up like this. You're a fraud star, et cetera, et cetera. And I was like, Dad, look, I do have an IT company. I've set it up. And he's like, I don't believe you. So basically, I gave him a business card. That was probably the wrong thing to do because I found myself literally homeless after that. So I thought about what to do here and I decided that I was going to go and speak to one of my potential suppliers. 
So I went down, spoke to the supplier, explained the situation to him. I says, look, I've got this order. There's the purchase order. And you can make money and I can make money. And the supplier agreed to supply me the stock and credit. So literally, I bought some components from the supplier and I set up a business manufacturing computers. Now, did I know how to manufacture computers? No, I didn't. But what I did do, I'd hired people that knew exactly what to do and I paid them a lot of money. And that was my first business and the rest is history. Okay, Mr. Stewart, thank you for these videos, Shaf. I'm willing to pay for this information, but I'm glad it's free. Keep up the great content. Mr. Stewart, I've got no intention of ever charging you for any information at all. I'll never try and sell you a course. I'll never try and sell you a book, anything of the sort. But if you do really feel strongly about it, my friend Josh Littlejohn is collecting money for the homeless. I've put a link below. If anybody wants to, to donate some money to Josh, he runs the charity Social Bite. I'd be delighted, absolutely delighted. Um, and if you feel this channel is useful, please make a charitable donation straight to Josh and you're doing a good thing. Baldi Berak, two million before lunch. Incredible work, well done. Thanks Baldi. If you want to know about this deal, guys, how I did it, how it all came together, stick something in the comments below and I'll do a video for it or I'll answer it in next week's video. Now this deal, in theory, was a no money down deal. But in reality, no money down deals don't exist. So stick a comment below and I'll answer it for you. Henry Taylor would love to see a commercial versus residential investment video. Find you by chance and I've watched a lot of videos. You give some great advice. Henry, I'm going to leave a link for it below. But what I will do as part of my Get Real Estate series, I will do this video and put a lot more flesh in the bone. So residential versus commercial in-depth video will be coming soon. Thanks. Clive Allen. Shaf, do you have any rent-to-rent -rent properties? No. Craig James, can you make me a millionaire, Shaf? Craig, to be honest with you, nobody can make you a millionaire. You can't go, go to a course and learn how to be a millionaire. You can't buy a magic pill and learn how to be a millionaire. If you want to improve yourself, okay, you want to improve your prospects, you have to do it yourself. And you do this through self-education. You buy books. You watch YouTube videos like this. You improve your knowledge. And then that's your first step. I'll do a more in-depth video about this at some point. Strength and success. Where would you start today if you were setting up your property business and had a few hundred grand to get going? Well, as I've already said, I prefer more than just property. I prefer to look at angles which will generate me more wealth. Another project that I've been working on is a project called Project Contempo. There's a series of videos for it just below. We're just going through planning for that at the moment. So go check out my Project Contempo videos. Big boy, where was you during the dot-com bubble? Big boy, like everybody else, I lost money in the dot-com bubble, okay? Now, I'm not going to say I'm the world's best entrepreneur because I have lost money. I have done bad deals, but I have learned from these deals and I'm passing on my experiences through all my various mediums, whether it's in my role as a business columnist for the Sun newspaper, whether it's on a video like this. Maddie Rogers, I was aiming to buy my first investment property this year, but now we're going into a recession. I'm not sure if this is the right time to buy. Any advice on when or where to buy in this climate? Maddie, to be honest with you, there's not enough data at the moment to, to make a decision one way or the other. A lot of property gurus are saying, yeah, yeah, when other people aren't buying, you should buy. But we don't know where the bottom of the market is. I would suggest you carry on watching this channel. I'll bring regular updates. But me personally, I don't have enough data at the moment to make an informed decision. I'm currently working from home because of the coronavirus lockdown and I'm finding it very difficult to concentrate. Any tips? Dot ball, I'm actually doing a video on this at the moment. It's an animated video. It should be released in the next couple of days. So please do check it out. Aisha Hakim, you need to do more videos on Samuel Leeds. These people are still falling for his tricks. Aisha, this is not the anti-Samuel Leeds channel. I am still going to fact check some of the things he said, but you've got to remember, it's quite a long process. The videos have to be created, then they have to go to my lawyers, my lawyers have to sign off on them, and then I release them. Daily Olawu, if I've pronounced that wrong, please accept my apologies. Now, Daily's question is, thank you for your help always. Please, is it possible to be a property mentor? You've got to remember that I do have a full-time job. At the moment, I have a bit of spare time, so I can actually do a bit of video content. I would love to mentor everybody in the world, but unfortunately, I can't. There's a couple of people I mentor, and they're both people that I met in my role as the resident entrepreneur at the University of Strathclyde. Can I take on any more people? Unfortunately, I can't. But what I can do is if you guys have any specific questions 
please post them up here and I will try and answer them for you. And check out my YouTube channel. A lot of the information you want is already there. Gypsy Malone. Great video, Shaft. Can you make a video on the whole process of buying a residential property? How much deposit, how to rent it out, etc. Guys, I'm happy to do this. If you think this is a good idea, please leave a comment below and I'll do a proper video about it rather than just an Ask Shaft Live. So just let me know in the comments below. Joanne Smith, the music is a bit loud. Note it, Joanne. I'll basically deal with that. Thank you for letting me know. Jason Potter, what is the best business to start with no money up front if there is any? Jason, I've already done a video on the subject. I'll leave a link for it in the comments below. Tom Martin, how to get a commercial mortgage? Tom, basically this will be covered in my Get Real Estate series. Mustafa Dar, Mustafa again. Hang on, you turned over 50 or 60 million and made 3 million net. Yes, Mustafa, that's quite an achievement. Here, I'm just going to throw something up on your screen for my company, Enet, which achieved that. Tam Sheik, if you had 2K left to your name, eBay shared junk sold off and wanted to dig yourself out of a loss 100 times what you've left, what would you consider as a small startup in the right direction? Tam, that's a very interesting question. And now, when I've mentored people in the past, one of the things basically a lot of people find difficult to understand is the concept of monetization and profit and loss. So what I make them do is I get them to take 500 pounds of their money and stick it in a separate bank account. And I say to them, right guys, I want you to double or quadruple this money, okay? And the way I make them do that, and I make them buy product, okay? And I make them buy the product and sell it on eBay and Amazon and Gumtree. And what it forces them to do is to do research on the product because they'll basically go into the second hand shop, they'll pick an LP up, they'll scan it on their iPhone and they'll see that it's 50p in the second hand shop and it's 12 quid on Amazon. Okay, and they'll say, oh, that's a good one. I'll buy that. And then in other instances, they'll buy something and basically sell it on Amazon or eBay or get lost in the post. So it explains the whole concept of trying to run a business. Now, some people or some of the people that I mentored have actually taken this a stage further. There's actually one person that I know that does this for a living. And what he does is he goes to John Pye, the auctioneers. Now, John Pye sell returns. They get Amazon's returns, okay? So if you buy something from Amazon and you don't like it, you send it back to Amazon. In a lot of instances, Amazon will send it to a company like John Pye and John Pye will auction it off. End of story. So the chap that I was mentoring basically has set up a business where he goes to John Pye and basically he buys product, returned product, and he tries to make sure that it's not faulty before he buys it, and then he sells it for a profit. So perhaps that's something you should look into. Gypsy Malone again. Shaf, I don't know if it's something you do, but would you be able to help me invest m money? I'm sorry, mate, I don't use other people's money. I use my own or the bank's money. Omar Tucker. How do you calculate for vacancies in your portfolio to ensure a positive cash flow? Omar, I will answer this question in detail as part of my Get Real Estate series in the future. Damon HU55, would you advise me to get into residential or commercial if I had £100,000? Also, I'm just starting out in property. Do you have any tips such as rent to rent? Damon, to be honest with you, a lot of people have asked me this question and I just advise them not to do rent to rent. I've done a video about rent to rent. You should go and check it out. I don't think rent to rent is a property strategy. It's a job. Okay, that's what it boils down to. It is a job. Okay, you don't own the property, you control it, and that's utter nonsense. You run about and you make very little money, you take all the headache, and the landlord takes the capital appreciation. So, I personally would stay away from rent to rent, but you know what? I am going to do, I'm going to share a story with you. Somebody put this question to me about six months ago. He's actually an accountant and he phoned me up and he said, Shaf, listen, I want to get into property and I've been watching all these videos and I've been reading all these articles and I was thinking of doing rent to rent and I was thinking of doing this and I was thinking of doing that and I was thinking of doing this. And I says, mate, just go away and think about it. You're a logical person. You're an accountant, basically. Put it all into a spreadsheet and tell me what you think is the best idea. So he went away and I met up with him a few weeks later and I says, what are you going to do, mate? And he says, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm basically going to sell my own house, the house that I stay in, okay? And I'm gonna buy a bigger house and I'm gonna buy a house that's run down. And I'm gonna do it up and it might take me a year or two years to do that, but I will add so much value to it. And the beauty of it is the value that I add will be tax free because when I sell the property, because it's my main residence, I won't be paying any tax. And do you know what? That is probably what I would do as well. Okay, if I had a job and I wanted to 
add a lot of capital or improve my personal balance sheet, what I would do is I would go and buy a bigger house. Okay, I would try and buy a house where I could potentially build a plot in the garden or something like that. I would renovate that house. I would add value to it and I would sell the house. I would retain the plot and I would sell the plot separately. And you know, the beauty of that is it's very, very, very low risk. It's absolutely low risk. There's no running a bit. There's no managing tenants. None of that nonsense. And you know why a property trainer won't tell you that? Because they can't sell a course saying, go and buy a bigger house. I mean, who would pay for that course? That's just nuts. So that is just basic common sense advice. It's the least risky way of generating wealth from property. I've got a plethora of questions. Um, which all essentially mount to the same thing. I get these regularly on all my other social media channels and from the readers of my column. And essentially the question is, Shaf, if you were starting again, what is the best low risk way of generating wealth from property? Well, guys, you know the question I just answered before this one? There's your answer. Okay, that is your answer. There is absolutely no doubt about it in my mind. That is how I would do it if I wanted to generate wealth from property. It's an entrepreneur's job to minimize the risk, okay, and maximize the upside. And that is one easy way of doing it, okay? The tax benefits of doing that are absolutely extraordinary. And that is what I would do. It's probably not what you wanted to hear, but look, I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm not trying to sell you a rent to rent course. I'm not trying to sell you a BRR course or any of that sort of nonsense. Okay, so I'm just going to tell you the way I see it, and that is it. So if you want to get into property, absolutely with minimal risk, okay, that's what you need to do. That needs to be your first couple of deals. What's the advice you would give to your 26-year-old self if you could? Do you know the advice I would give myself is basically, Shaf, before you get into any opportunities, do proper due diligence. Do proper due diligence, do proper research. The only times I have lost money, and there's been a lot of times when I've lost money, like anybody else, I have made bad decisions. But the good thing is, the good decisions that I've made have outweighed the bad decisions, so I have still made money. But the only times I have lost money is when I didn't do proper due diligence. So I would advise myself, Shaf, do proper research, do proper due diligence before you make any business decisions whatsoever. So guys, there you have it. First ever session of Ask Shaf Live. Now, I need you to do me a little favour. I need you to leave me more questions below so I can actually answer them, okay? Because if there's no questions, I can't answer them. It's as simple, simple as that. So please stick some questions down there below. Also, can you please like my video? And if you haven't subscribed, can you please subscribe to my YouTube channel? Really appreciate that. Thank you.